Hey guys, I have here the 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from AO Lithium that I reviewed about a week and a half ago on December 17th. Uh, this battery had a rating of 200 amps continuous maximum discharge current. And one of my viewers questioned whether or not the cells in this battery could actually support the 200 amp continuous discharge current that the battery as a whole is rated for. So in doing some digging, we were able to find the model number of the cells in this battery and the original specification sheet. Uh, and they are Calb Cells model LF160F100. And I have the specification sheet here. Now this is version A of the specification sheet. These cells are rated for a maximum continuous discharge of 100 amps. A maximum pulse discharge of 200 amps for up to 3 minutes and a maximum short pulse discharge of 300 amps for up to 30 seconds provided that the battery temperature stays under 50 degrees Celsius. When I saw that, I quickly contacted the manufacturer to see what their statement was on this and figure out what exactly was going on. The first thought that came to my mind was that the data sheet I found was version A and perhaps there was a new version released since then. Uh, so I finally received a response this morning and the manufacturer has issued a statement and an apology that the rating of this battery is only 100 amps continuous discharge. So they've provided me with a new specification sheet. They've asked me to share this information. Uh, there will be a link to it in the description of this video. The specification sheet of their battery as a whole now matches the specifications of the Calb cells. That is a 100 amp continuous discharge or a 200 amp discharge for up to three minutes. And this is somewhat unfortunate because the whole thing that made this battery stand out from other batteries on the market was that this one was capable of 200 amps where most of the others are only capable of 100 amps uh, around this price point continuous discharge current. So I still don't think this is a bad battery. It's built very, very well. The problem is that the specifications on it are wrong the trade-off to using the BMS that could support the higher current was that you cannot put four of these batteries in series for 48 volts. So my recommendation to them would really be to take this battery back to the research and development process, put a new BMS in there that's capable of 100 amps and uh, 4S or 48 volts in nominal, and then remarket this as a new battery. Because as it stands, 24 volts is really a strange uh, voltage. Uh, most people I know that are doing off-grid are doing either 12 volts for small setups in their RV, their car, things like that, or those that are powering a whole house or a large-scale application are using 48 volts. I don't really know anybody that's using 24 volts. It's kind of just a strange stepping stone between um, a 12 volt and a 48 volt system. Uh, so while I don't think this is a bad battery at all, it's built exceedingly well, uh, I think there are other options on the market priced a bit lower or significantly lower with the same features. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the BMS in this battery is programmed for a maximum discharge of 210 amps before it trips. That's something to keep in mind when you're using this battery. Um, I don't know in my personal opinion that that should be corrected or not because this battery still carries a maximum discharge of 200 amps for up to three minutes. That's something that the manufacturer is going to have to address and figure out. Um, that's just my uh, personal thoughts and opinions on that particular issue. So lastly, I had planned to do a 200 amp discharge test of this battery but I was waiting for a response from the manufacturer. And now that we know it's not rated for 200 amps, I don't think I'm going to do that. There was already a 200 amp test done by another YouTuber on Will Prouse's channel. In his test, he let it run the entire time for 200 amps and his BMS reported 75 degrees Celsius at the end of the test. On the original data sheet from Calb, it says the absolute discharge temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. And then it further says no matter what the discharging model is, once the temperature of the cell is above the absolute discharging temperature, discharging should be stopped. So I don't see a point in pushing this battery well beyond what it's actually rated for. That's uh, dangerous in my opinion, and that will damage and degrade the cells if nothing else. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. An updated data sheet will be found in the description below. Questions or comments, you can leave those, and thanks for watching.